This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we'll talk with a survivor about her journey next. Hi everyone, it's great to be back and great to be with you. Thank you for your time. I'm Ken Kara, coming to you on screens of all types, thanks to the Samsung Productions app and in HD on Service Electric Cablevision Channel 513. Let's get to our headlines from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. United States Congressman Tom Marino will not be the nation's drug czar. President Donald Trump said today that Marino withdrew his name from consideration for the drug czar position. Marino's decision to withdraw comes after reports that he played a key role in passing a bill that weakened the federal government's ability to stop the distribution of opioids. Marino co-chaired President Donald Trump's campaign last year in Pennsylvania, along with Congressman Lou Barletta. State police are looking for witnesses to a motorcycle crash that injured one man and resulted in the discovery of drugs. It happened just after midnight Monday in the area of 639 Sandy Valley Road in Foster Township. According to state police, 34-year-old Vernon Gold of Whitehaven was riding a dirt bike west on Sandy Valley Road. Troopers say it appeared the bike struck an animal in the roadway and lost control. Gold was not wearing a helmet and was transported to Geisinger Wyoming Valley Hospital with a severe head injury. State police report that they located approximately 70 grams of suspected crystal methamphetamine and approximately three bundles of suspected heroin at the scene belonging to the operator. Any witnesses or anyone with information on the crash is asked to call Trooper Jason Zoshak at State Police in Hazleton at 570-459-3890. A man charged with two armed holdups in Hazleton has pled guilty. 30-year-old Kurt T. Mumi of Sugarloaf pleaded guilty to two felony counts of robbery and a misdemeanor count of making terroristic threats. Prosecutors say Mumi robbed Pence's Variety Store on Alter Street back on April 6th and the Pantry Quick at 902 West Diamond Avenue on April 8th. He was ordered jailed at the Luzerne County Prison pending his sentencing, which is set for November 20th. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in women. Only lung cancer kills more women each year. Lisa Sugar talked with two women who believe in the cause, one who has a very special reason. The month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So today we're pleased to have two lovely ladies in our studios here today. Both of them are volunteers with the American Cancer Society, and one has a very special story to tell as well. I'm pleased to introduce Alice McQuaid and also Michelle Connors. And they're both involved with the Relay for Life as well with the American Cancer Society. Michelle, how important is it to get the word out that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Early detection is a key. Uh, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. It's important to do your self checks, like I said, early detection. Years ago, when someone was diagnosed with breast cancer, it was a death sentence. Now it's not. There is so much research has been done and technology, it's, it's amazing and it's, it's good now. It's not, it doesn't have to be a scary thing anymore. There's so many survivors now from breast cancer, so we need to keep it in the forefront to get rid of it completely, hopefully one day, is my, is my wish. I, go ahead. I know you've had a lot of family and friends that have dealt with cancer, but when I told you to come in and talk about it, you said, wait, I have a great story to bring with me. So you wanted to bring your good friend Alice because she is definitely one of those great positive stories. So Alice, I guess first of all, congratulations because I hear you receive good news. You are a breast cancer survivor, but tell everybody where you're at right now because the cancer's gone. Yes, yes, I had treatments. I'm sorry, I get very emotional. I had treatments starting uh, the middle of May and I had chemotherapy right from the middle of May to the end of September. And last week at my surgeon's appointment, they told me my cancer was gone. Wow, congratulations, you got me all. Uh, <laughs> 
choked up hearing about it. That is great news. We wanted to, people to know there are great stories like this. I remember we did a story here that there was a fundraiser for you because you were going through so much mm -hmm. and we were worried about you and said, tell Alice, you know, we're asking about her. Now I get to meet Alice <laughs> and it's for a great reason. So what do you say to other people out there who may have gotten the same diagnosis or a diagnosis of cancer? There is definitely hope. There's definitely hope. Don't lose the faith. I had a very, my mass was very big and you know I was very scared I, I just thought that I kept thinking negative but then all you know with all the family and friends and the support that is what that is the biggest thing that has gotten me through and the positive attitude is a big thing to keep um, when you're going through this to just keep a positive attitude keep the faith and it works it works <laughs> It definitely works. It definitely does and work. And the prayers, and the prayers definitely work. Oh, absolutely. Work. We are so happy for you. And you ladies are, you know, dedicated to the American Cancer Society and the Relay for Life. And Michelle, you want other people to get out there to help to raise money so we can have more success stories like Alice. Absolutely. I'm going into my 11th year at Relay for Life. Alice was one of my first team members. I went to a Girl Scout meeting. I said, hey, I'm doing this thing. <laughs> We're going to relay. You're going you're to be on my team. She's like, okay. And we've been doing it ever since. Um, it's important to raise money for research for all cancers, not just breast cancer. Relay represents all forms of cancer. We want to find a cure for all cancers. We want it to be a word that's obsolete in the, in the future. So Relay, it's fun, it's a, it, lots of fun times, some tears, lots of happy tears, lots of great stories and camaraderie between the survivors. And we, we're there to celebrate the survivors. Well, you're gonna have a big celebration this year because you got this lady with you there. So if you'd like to be part of the great celebration or if you need more information about the American Cancer Society and its many good works, you can give them a call to get involved with Relay or for information at 570-459-1212. Michelle and Alice would be happy to have you join them as they relay and have more success stories like Alice. Thanks, Lisa, for that story. Samsung Productions is proud to announce the return of Law Talk. Sponsored by the Slusser Law Firm in Hazel Township, the show provides valuable information on legal issues that are important to you, our viewers. This week, Sam LaSant talks with attorney Chris Slusser about the importance of auto policies. You can watch the premiere episode of Law Talk tonight at 8.30 p.m. right here on SSP TV or anytime via our free Samsung Productions app or at SSP TV. Dot com. Well, the best part of our segment Outdoor Adventures with Kent Jackson is that the, fa is the fact that if you're not too big on the outdoors like me, you can still sit inside and enjoy, and I think it's Outdoor Adventures. In sports, we're going to talk with the District 2 slash 4 AAA sub-regional girls tennis champions, the Hazleton area Lady Cougars. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Previous weeks, we've talked with Frank Skikowski about his enjoyment of the outdoors in the Hazleton area. And as Frank said, if you keep your eyes peeled, you don't have to go far to uh, see part of the natural world. But Frank, you've had the opportunity to travel widely too. Why don't you tell us about some of the stops on your road, places you've seen, and people you've met on your travels? I've been blessed. I really have. It, it is a blessing because I've been on all the continents now, and there's so much I could spend hours and weeks on the show talking about it, but some of the highlights, like the gorillas we just saw in Africa and Rwanda to get so close to the penguins. That was a trip I took. Very fortunate to be with Neil Armstrong. You see the world as God created it. You see the penguins in their natural 
habitat. And then the lions in Africa, there's nothing like, or, and again, you don't have to go far. Canada, Calabogie Lakes, to hear a loon at night with a moon rising. There's just so much, and again, I've been very fortunate. I was in Belize, the songbirds down there, so many different species, if you go there in January, and, and they all um, are down there, the same birds that inhabit our forests up here, and to see them down there, they travel so many thousands of miles in their migration. So yeah, I've been very fortunate, and that's why we need to preserve this, because also on those travels, I've seen how, how global warming is real and how it is affecting the gorillas in Africa and the glaciers in Antarctica and all over where my travels go. Every country I go to, they're saying, we got to do something about this to stop it. So that's important. Your most recent trip was to Idaho. Tell us about that one. That was another wonderful, the eclipse. So I'm encouraging everybody and all of your viewers, if they get the chance in seven years, to make plans to see the totality. That's what's important because it's, you can see it at 99% with the glasses, but when it's 100% total, flipping the switch off, it gets dark, it gets cold, and it's an experience which is life-changing. It was a really beautiful experience. With your Next plans, um, what would you like to see that you haven't seen so far? I can go on for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much. I'm learning. There's not enough time to see everything I want to see. I'm going to India, Nepal, and uh, Bhutan next month. Hopefully, we're going to see a tiger in the woods up there. That's going to be important. There's so many other trips I want to do. I'm really getting into going back to Poland, which is my dad was of Polish heritage, and there are some really old forests there. I didn't get the opportunity last trip, but that's on my agenda. Thanks for opening our minds and our eyes to the, the things around us. Oh, thank you, Ken. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. I had to scrape off my car this morning. I'm not a happy camper. Life goes on, I guess. Here's your local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight will be clear. It will be cold once again. We'll have a low of 42 degrees and a southwest wind from 5 to 7 miles per hour. On Wednesday, the sun's back out. We'll have a high in the mid-60s. At night, it's clear with a low of 46 degrees. Thursday, sunny. We'll have a high once again at 65 degrees. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low of 45 degrees. Friday sunny with a high in the upper 60s. Friday night low once again in the mid 40s. Clear sky. Saturday sunny with a high of 69. And then Saturday night mostly clear low of 48 degrees. We're in the beautiful ballroom here at Edgeward. We're back with Samantha Perkowski. She is the certified wedding coordinator. And there's a lot happening here that's going to benefit you if you are getting married. So thanks for having us. I thanks feel like we should be dancing here on the, on the ballroom dance floor. <laughs> we are. We're here, here in the beautiful Bliss Ballroom. And yes, we just actually got back from Wedding Wire World, which was in Washington, D.C. this year. So mm -hmm. we're so fortunate to work for a company that sends us to these great events because it really benefits our brides and grooms. Mm -hmm. um, we had learned so much while we were there and thankfully we we're able to bring that back and present those to our brides and grooms as well. So we actually sat in on a seminar that was really, really awesome. Um, it actually gave us tips into what is trending for weddings for 2018. Oh, well, I'm excited to hear about this. So every year, this is something that they have, and you go to it, and you see what's going on. Kind of like fashion would be uh, with the Newark runway. This is for brides and yeah. what's new and coming. So listen up. Absolutely. So one of the things that they did mention, they had actually taken a poll of all of their brides and grooms, and family-style dinners Ooh. are what's becoming very, very popular for next year, which here at Edgewood, we do have our own family-style menu. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we do offer here. It's great because it's still very formal but your guests have a large amount of food that they get to choose from and it's something that will keep replenishing to their table so people love food and you know they love to eat so this is something that's becoming very very popular for next year now is that something because it's a, a, a weddings are larger or smaller or did they say I think it's really just because people like a lot of food mm. people remember the food and the drinks and of course the dancing too so it's a great way to kind of get um, the amount of food that you would for a buffet style but it's still almost like a plate at meal where we're serving you. All right, well, let's talk about the color scheme. Did they, did they mention that for 2018? So they have not yet announced the um, colors for next oh. year, the Pantone 
colors of the year, but usually most brides end up kind of going off of that. So that is still something very popular. Um, very boho chic items are becoming popular. So soft greens and pinks as well. Um, and to tie into that very natural ceremony site. So when I heard that, I was very happy because we have our own ceremony site here at Edgewood, which is in a really beautiful natural setting. So you get the woods behind you, the trees around, um, greens and browns and so forth too. So if you're looking to kind of go along with that trend, that's the perfect ceremony site for you. Edgewood's got it going on. It we seems do. like you're ahead of the times on everything uh, that you do. You have the cutting edge behind you with the experience with going to these uh, conventions. Yeah. Now you did get a chance to meet someone who you might know at home, right? <laughs> yes, so we had the chance to meet Monty Durham, mm -hmm. and he is from Say Yes to the Dress, Atlanta. So I'm sure that you guys have seen that show if you know, you're a bride and groom um, planning your own wedding, and he was wonderful, so funny, and he had a lot of great fashion tips for us, too. Well, I saw the photo, which you're seeing now, and I really think that you looked like the star more than him. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. So if anyone is getting married for 2018, 19, 20, they should, I always say this, but this, now's the time to really like get the date and Absolutely. and make sure that it's it's open yes our dates book up so quickly especially if you're looking for a saturday mm -hmm. so if you do have that special date in mind something that sounds perfect to you give us a call so we can get it locked in soon all right very good samantha thanks for joining us here Thank and you. join us each and every week on ssp tv news Here's your midday winning lottery numbers on SSP TV News. The pick two, hey, it's the one three, pick three, six seven one, pick four zero eight six six, pick five seven three two six seven, and your wild number is eight. We'll show you a wild scene at Kirby Park yesterday when the Hazelton area girls tennis team won a sub regional championship. That story when we come back. Time now for sports on SSP TV News. One of my favorite quotes of all time comes from the fictional character Andy Bernard during the series finale of The Office. He said, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. The 2017 Hazelton Area Girls Tennis Team is in the good old days. They are playing tennis non-stop in an end-of-the-season marathon that's already earned them singles medals and the school's first-ever team sub-regional championship. This highlight of history being made is not just for you, the viewer. It's also for Hazelton area number three singles player, Sophia Lowson. She says this moment is a blur in her memory. Hazelton area was tied at two with Abington Heights in the district's two slash four triple A sub-regional championship when this happened. It's really hard to sum it up because I'm just about speechless. Um, it is the most incredible feeling. I feel like I'm in a dream pretty much. So if you could like pinch me to make sure that I'm in real life, that would be awesome. Game, set, match. <laughs> Sophia Lowson beat Lauren Kochwara 6-4-6-2, and the Lady Cougars won the school's first ever sub-regional team tennis championship. Lowson was in a similar situation last year. Abington Heights beat the Cougars 3-2-2 in the semifinals, and Lowson dropped her match 6-0-6-1. She says her nerves got to her a little bit, and she was determined to not let that happen again this year, even after she fell behind early. I felt like I was hitting more fluidly. Um, my nerves fell away after the first set, so I was really able to hit my shots and really just play my game. Um, I really stopped, I tried to stop playing her game and like the lob and slow and just attack the ball more. 2017 sub-regional singles gold medalist Stephanie Mazurik won her match when her opponent Lauren Carroll had to retire due to an injury. Lily Nowak, this year's singles silver medalist, defeated Claire Della Valley 6-0, 6-0. So all the Lady Cougars number one and number two singles players could do was watch and wait. It was Sophia's moment. She had it from the beginning. I saw her play. She knew she had it. She had a lot of confidence today, and she was just playing some of the best tennis I've ever seen her play today. Her forehand was great, and she just did really well. She's playing at the best. You're playing at your best. Steph seems to be doing pretty good. I mean, it's hard to believe, but have you guys hit the highest pinnacle? Like you're saying, this is the best you got. all of you have ever played? I think this is probably the best that all of us have ever played, yeah. So, I mean, watch out for me and Sophia for double smile. States and Steph in states, so... We're coming after everyone. Nowak and Lowson will team up in the district doubles tournament, trying to earn even more medals. With all the hugs and awards, it can be easy to forget just how far this program has come in just a few short years. During Missouri and Lowson's freshman year, the Lady Cougars went 1-12. I would say as a freshman, 
coming into it, I really didn't have many long-term goals, like even for myself at singles. But looking at as, as a team how much we've improved and grown over the years, I think it was definitely achievable this year as we proved, and I'm just excited that we were able to pull it off. Playing on the court right next to Lawson was the Lady Cougars' number one doubles team of Adriana Bowman and Alyssa Mazurik, Stephanie's sister. Uh, individually, they've had so much success. Was it nice to see the team pull through and do it all together today? It was. It really, really was. You know, we always um, think Lily and, and Steph yeah. will kind of get the win for us there, and watching our doubles team come out as hard as they did in three sets today. Sophia, I know she feels a lot of pressure as a third singles and as a senior. She came out first set a little a little rough, she was a little nervous, and then confidence boost, and that was it. She was taking it home. There is one element we've left out of the story so far. Losin's lucky visor given to her by no walk. This is the visor. It's really sweaty and disgusting. You can see the sweat on it, but um, I owe Lily my life for this because this has been the lucky visor right here. <laughs> so you did well, but the visor did most of the work. Oh, all, all visor. <laughs> when the sun sets on this season, what will be left are visors, medals, stories, and friendships. All of them are reminders of the time this group came together to make history. Lady Cougars weren't the only ones celebrating on Monday. MMI's Jessica McClellan is heading to the PIAA Class AA Championships in golf. It will be the senior's first trip. Here's a fall sports scene. She says her hands were frozen and her coach described the conditions as brutal at the regional tournament. She shot a 99 and ended up tied for seventh with Alexandra Smith of Kenner Dale. The pressure was on too when Smith bogeyed the playoff hole and McClellan had to sink a par putt to move on. And she did that. We're trying to talk with her before the state championships in York next week. Finally, here's our SSP TV standard speaker scoreboard. Gabby Cavanis, Molly Gould scored in Hazleton Area's field hockey win over Pittston Area. The Lady Cougars, they lost in volleyball. Hazleton Area swept Pottsville in water polo and they both got victories, the girls and the boys. The Hazleton area boys, they lost in soccer, and Aaron Judge ran into a wall to make a catch and then hit a ball over the wall in a big win for the Yankees in the ALCS. And that's sports for Tuesday. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk of the Town. We kick off today's social report with the Swearingen and Kelly Band performing on Thursday, October 19th at the Mock Chunk Opera House. This is a free show. Doors will open at 7 p.m. and the showtime is at 7.30 p.m. Then on this Sunday, October 22nd, the Hazleton Police FOP Lodge Number 18 will be having a kids' Halloween carnival at the Giant Supermarket in Hazleton. If you have any questions, you can contact Officer Green at the number on your screen. And if anyone watched the news yesterday, you would have saw that I did a terrible We Are Penn State chant. That's probably because I'm not a Penn State fan, so we'll just leave that for Kenny and Lisa. But one thing I am a fan of is Thon. And speaking of Thon, there's a designer purse bingo that will benefit Thon on Sunday, October 22nd at the Penn State Hazleton Gymnasium. Cost is $20 in advance and $25 at the door. For more information, you can get in touch with Nicole at the email on your screen. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Lorraine M. Drozdick of Bloomsburg. Mass is Saturday at 10.30 a.m. at St. Columba Church in Bloomsburg. Arrangements are by the Dean W. Cringer Funeral Home in Bloomsburg. Randy S. Nensteel of Sugarloaf Township. Funeral is Thursday at 8 p.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home in Drums. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Funeral Home. And Marilyn S. Sowers of Hazleton. All services will be private under the Turnbach Funeral Home in Hazleton. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name now on SSP TV News, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is Francis Hill of Tamaqua. Call now and leave a message at 570-455-7267, extension 104, for your free movie. I messed up the name of Kent Jackson's segment twice today. It's outdoor exploring, not outdoor adventures. If I'm not fired, I'll see you back here tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.